In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Passion Sunday, Palm Sunday, is one of the most crucial feasts in the liturgical calendar. Why? Because we go through the entire Passion from St. Matthew. What does that do for us? A lot of churches may cut it up or, or not have it at all. But if we do the, the entire thing, what we're doing is we're, we're preparing for Holy Week. That's what we're from His supper to His death to His stay in the tomb to His resurrection. We're preparing ourselves for that very thing. And so to not read the Passion, I believe robs us from preparation, meditation, and more importantly, prayer. We should be praying St. Matthew's Gospel, especially in preparation for this upcoming Holy Week. But there's more to it than that as well. I mean, you spoke. Could you not feel that pain? Were you not the centurions and the Pharisees when you spoke? Were you not moved by the words? I know that I am. Particularly when the, the, the verse that says, and I don't know why this one gets me so much, the one that says, and they slapped him. I, I almost lose it. Because the scourging and all that I can picture, but the spitting and the slapping, it's just, it's... It's just the, the, the humiliation after the pain. In other words, they really want to get Jesus. Not just hurt Him, but humiliate Him. Crown of thorns, a reed, a cross that says the King of the Jews, mocking from the top, the thief on the left, mocking Him, the thief on the right being baptized in his own blood. In that text, and they slapped him, reminds me of also how we treat Christ. If I were to ask you if you would slap Christ, the answer would be, no, I would not slap Christ. If you were to hurt Christ, would you be able to hurt Christ? To scourge Christ? To make a crown of thorns? Which you know would take time. I mean, it took them a long time to make that. Which means it took a long, a long time of malice, of hate, and of vitriol. If I were to say to you, you were to deny Him. What would you say? Are we, are we not less than the apostles? Yes, we are less than the apostles. And that's the way it should be. They wrote the Gospels that, so that we would know. And yet all of them ran. All of them fled. But they also all said, we will not flee from you. They all said that. Peter was in particular, was very clear that he would not do that. And he was the one that was highlighted. Passion Sunday is more than just reading the Passion. It's also understanding that the passion of Christ is for us. We who would hurt Christ with our sin, do we not pierce Him when we speak against those in authority? Do we not hurt Him when we speak ill of one another? Do we not scourge Him or make a crown of thorns to place it on His head every time we lust, every time we envy, 
Every time we have wrath, every time we spread ill words rather than trying to take it up with those you have something against. We do. There's no, there can be no doubt about that. It's not as if sins are free or that they're isolated or that they're in a vacuum. Our sins are very real and they affect Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Our sins are evil incense engulfing the nose of God. And it smells bitter. So what are we to do then? I invite you to come this week, this holy week that starts today. Hear about it. Hear about the night when Christ was betrayed, when He took bread, broke it, and gave it to His disciples and said, Take and eat. This is My body given for you. Take and drink. This is My blood of the New Testament shed for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. Come and hear about His great passion in our Good Friday 10 Embrace service. Come to the vigil and hear about your baptism and the love of God. Come Easter Sunday and hear that the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Because in that, it's an exercise in hearing God's Word. It's an exercise in understanding that you will have the Lord's Supper over and over and over again. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Because you will hear that Christ gives you His body in each and every one. So that when you watch through the readings, that Christ's Lord's Supper, when you watch that through the readings, I will not hesitate to commune you so that you are there. Good Friday. When you see what our sins do to Christ, I will not hesitate to commune you. In the Easter Vigil, when you hear about your baptism, I will not hesitate to commune you. Easter, when we celebrate the resurrection, I will not hesitate to commune you. Remember those sins? One after the other, after the other, after the other that we do to God? Understand, He doesn't leave us alone in that. He sent His Son to be crucified, to forgive our sins. And the Holy Spirit comes and whispers in our hearts and in our ears, You are forgiven! Do you not know that you're a Christian? Do you not know that you bear the name of Christ? Go to those who hurt you. Respect authority. Lust not. Envy not. Be not wrathful. And understand this. All of that is done by the Holy Spirit. How good and gracious and wonderful it is when brothers can dwell together in harmony and love. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. So, I do hope and expect that we will have a full and robust attendance for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, and Easter. Because it's an exercise not only in hearing God's Word, it's an exercise in being fed God's Word. And in that, there can be no equal. There can be no greater. All those sins, forgiven by feeding, forgiven by drinking. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever.